Hi, and welcome to episode one of Spam House Deliverability Live. Our hosts today are deliverability experts Anna and Shri from the Spam House Project. Today they will be discussing sunset policies, what, what they are and why you need one. You can use the comments section to ask any questions and we'll try to answer them in the live broadcast. For any we don't answer, we'll pick them up from the comments and come back to you. So over to you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. Uh, my name is Sri and I'm part of the Spam House Projects. And uh, before we get into what is the sunset policy, uh, I want to start with a recent experience. So I recently moved to a new place and uh, noticed that I was receiving uh, a lot of uh, mail from, from my previous tenant in my physical mailbox. And this is very natural and not surprising, but it was all kinds of mails from the local furniture shop to sensitive emails from the bank. Uh, of course, I did not open any of those. Now, if we relate to uh, your mailing list, where you have customers who have either abandoned their email addresses or just moved on from their old AOL.com address, as it's not fancy anymore, all those emails are going to addresses who should never be receiving these emails. And these can be sensitive emails with personal information like addresses, your phone number, and everything is being shared with a third party. So this is where the sunset policy uh, comes into uh, the picture. And again, this is just one of the reasons of thing related to the move. I'm also looking at all kinds of uh, uh, furniture related things and uh, just to set up my uh, new home. And I'm sure I've, I've just subscribed to all of these. And uh, in a couple of weeks time, I would no longer uh, need these, but all these, uh, my email address will be, be with all these brands for perpetuity unless I go ahead and uns unsubscribe them. So yeah. Uh, this is also another place where sunset uh, policy would help. So what is the sunset policy? So sunset policy is a strategy to clean your, clean your uh, keep your email database clean of old email addresses, which no longer engage with your brand. So this also ties to the core of email deliverability, sending email to subscribers that really want to receive. So just as we recommend having a confirmed opt-in list uh, and doing uh, similarly, we also recommend doing a regular cleanup uh, of your email database. And hey, mailbox providers regularly clean their uh, uh, dead email addresses. So it's all the more relevant that as senders, you also need to do the same. In fact, Gmail is going to uh, doing a big exercise of cleaning up their, uh, uh, their database. So it's all the more relevant for you also to do the same. And uh, to tell you a little bit more about why we need a sunset policy, I will pass it on to Anna. Thank you, Shri. So yeah, as Shri was talking about the emails being retired over time, um, that also brings in why the sense of policy is important even for the live inboxes. So obviously, depending on the model of the business, some of the senders will charge you per email, some of them will just send you by the campaign. And uh, you want obviously the best click through rates, the best uh, results, the best efficiency, and the email addresses that are not responding, not interacting with your emails are sitting there and they're not generating any anything useful to be fair. And with the sunset policy, what you can do is structureize your list into the active participants and then those that have not interacted with anything you sent them for the past three months or six months. It depends how often you really contact them. And then based on that, either offer them some sort of seasonal promotion or send some information that they might be interested in and if they don't don't respond and they don't interact, then maybe send one last one saying, well, you haven't really responded to us. We'll put email, mailing you on hold, but if you want to let us know when we'll come back, because chances are if they haven't responded with these two, they will probably not even go back ever again. And uh, this will help improve your deliverability. It will also reflect big times on your reputation and reputation is key as we all know. Um, so that's pretty much as, as, as simple as it seems. It's really not when it comes to implementing it. And this is where I will turn over to Shri on how to do it. Thanks, Anna. And uh, before we get to the how part, uh, I just wanted to stress on the whole reputation thing that you brought up. That's really important because uh, 
as you know, engagement is a big part of reputation nowadays, both IP and domain reputation. So uh, again, just having all those old addresses, I've seen um, uh, a few senders having more than 50% of uh, their addresses, which have never been engaged. And uh, just thinking that from a reputation perspective, if you have all those, uh, that many addresses that have never engaged, that's just going to cause a drop in reputation. And as you know, once you have a drop in reputation, it's all the more difficult to build back a reputation. So yeah, uh, so how to effectively uh, do, uh, a sun, uh, do a sunset policy? So the first part is to identify the addresses that are no longer engaging with your email. And uh, this is where the whole engagement thing, again, comes back to the picture. And it plays a very important role, as, as I mentioned. Uh, and uh, as a sender, uh, there's a lot of data. We need to start looking at those engagement metrics, too, just like how the receivers are looking at. And there can be many ways um, that you can look at your ESP. Uh, they can be tracking engagements, a lot of your opens and clicks and so on. So there are a lot of ways that you can look at uh, engagement. And uh, similarly, you should also have a process in place to suppress, uh, suppress uh, those addresses uh, that are not engaging for a period of time. Now, the period of time can be a variable uh, that again depends on the nature of your business. So you can have your own, it again depends on your business and the uh, volume of emails that you're sending, the cadence of emails. Uh, but the idea is that you need to have look at engagement uh, based suppression policy. And uh, yeah, uh, again, there's no one glove fits all for uh, all this. And uh, some users might look at it just like uh, six months, some, some users might look at it as a year. But again, the whole idea is just you need to uh, keep uh, uh, revisiting this. And uh, once you have identified these uh, addresses that you do not uh, engage, uh, comes a tough part of uh, letting them go. And uh, it's again, important to look at why the users are engaged because um, that, that there's a reason why they're not engaging with the emails is that you're sending too many emails, uh, you're sending non-relevant emails. So uh, before you come to the whole uh, suppression, you need to find out why they're not, uh, uh, why they're not uh, engaging. And that's where um, uh, what I usually recommend is before you get to say a, a re-engagement policy, you need to also look at an opt-down policy. Sometimes people uh, might be getting a lot of emails. So just having an opt-down policy helps uh, you building in a, in a cleaner re-engagement uh, policy. And uh, once you have that re-engagement policy or a win-back campaign in mind, and as Anna mentioned, you can include your special promotions and discounts and just get creative as you want. But utilize all the data that you have about the customer in uh, bringing back uh, while doing the re-engagement. And uh, once you have uh, the re-engagement re plan in mind, make sure to do it slowly and you have a proper uh, plan in place. Because what we have seen is uh, there can be senders who like just have a huge spike in spam trap hits one fine day. And that's because they didn't have a proper planning for their re-engagement policy. That's, so that's really important uh, once you get to the re-engagement part. And finally, when you have done the re-engagement policy and uh, uh, you have uh, brought back a few customers back to the fold, there's definitely going to be a subset of users who just do not want uh, your emails anymore. And that's the time to say uh, goodbye uh, to these folks. So again, one thing I would like to reiterate over here is it's not the quantity of your database that matters. It's the quality of the list that matters. And yeah, I think uh, that's all I had. Anna, do you want to add anything else over here? Um, no, you made a very valid point about the quality of the list because I understand that people a lot of effort into actually aggregating the emails and keeping the list. And uh, what sometimes can happen is over time, uh, say if you had a business email for someone and the company went out of business and the email in the long run can be turned into the spam trap and that's definitely not somewhere you want to send your emails or if someone got married and then changed their last name and they got the new inbox and then the old inbox is just sitting there hoarding all of the promotions that are never reaching anyone's eyes that's not really helpful and I understand that it can be sometimes really hard to tell them bye but if you see that there was no interaction it was then amount of like a pretty significant amount of time it would be a smart thing to prune those for the better word and uh focus on the customers who are actually active absolutely and uh, one thing i want to bring in over here again uh 
uh, uh, a lot of folks have this uh, whole thing about uh, the Apple MPP and how do we look at uh, start looking at lists or what is the data signals that we need to start looking at. And uh, something that I, al I always recommend is, hey, start looking at um, uh, your, uh, uh, Always, it's the first. First is the data that you have in house that you start looking at. The first party data that you have that is start. That is what you need to start looking at. And most of the ESPs have uh, a lot of signals that you need to start utilize. Now, I think MPP has been there for about close to two years. So there's uh, they're, they're, they have figured out ways to figure out hey, what is the actual opens and what are the uh, clicks and so on. So uh, there is enough data over there. If you start looking at data, you would find. Uh, there is a set of users who are not engaging with your emails. So that is one part of the whole equation that is uh, available for you. So even though you're not sure who are the users that might or might not have engaged, but there's definitely a set of users who have not engaged at all. So that is th that is something which you can uh, glean from the data. So definitely, uh, I'd recommend definitely look into that. If there are people who have not um, just checked your mail for about, say, three years, two years, that that's a good enough time for that email address to become a spam trap. And uh, trust me, they don't want to hear from you. So yeah, so again, uh, just look at the data. You should, you should, uh, you would be surprised with what you find. And uh, I think we can, any other question that comes to your mind, uh, Anna, that you've heard often? Yeah, I think we've covered pretty much what we had prepared. So now we can turn to the questions to see if anything has come in. Oh, here's a good one that we can go over is how to re-engage the subscribers. So I think we've pretty much covered this already, but uh, if you see that there's been some interaction at some point, at least like they didn't subscribe and completely abandoned your mails, but they've actually come in and done something, you might want to email them very gently and say, listen, you've subscribed to our mailing list, but you've not been active recently. Is there anything you're looking for that you didn't find? Or would you be interested in a certain promotion you can offer them? Um, like free shipping, if that's something you can do, or offer them some, some sort of like, look, there's new stuff that our company have done in the past half a year that you've not been around. Some, some something to capture their attention, something that will make them actually click, read through, and maybe actually turn back. Or, you know, it again depends of what you are doing, who your audience is, big times. But a kind reminder, just sort of saying, hi, we missed you in a sort of tone could be useful. And then if they haven't interacted, give them maybe like three, four weeks again, depending how often you email them, maybe less, and come back saying, well, we haven't heard from you, so we will put you on hold and we will not email you again. But if you ever decide to come back, let us know. We'll be happy to have you back. Yeah, completely agree with that. With that. And uh, actually, that's a very powerful, that last piece of email that you send. Maybe people just having a catchy subject line saying, like, hey, it's it's heartbreaking to uh, let uh, see uh, you go that's good enough uh, for us uh, for uh, the for the subscriber to understand okay that might be the last email so uh, it, it is very uh, important in the whole chain of events over there so uh, one more thing uh, another question that I can see over here is about the whole holiday sending and that's when uh, a lot of people uh, try to uh, dig into that database uh, sent to all the uh, all the uh, bones <laughs> start rolling out of the closet. So uh, this is where it's uh, very relevant to have a, a complete plan in place. And um, when we say holiday season, it actually starts a couple of months earlier itself. It's not just November, December. So you should start looking at your list completely and see, uh, try to sneak in small campaigns and see if it's really relevant to the users and start uh, pruning those lists and uh, building that uh, engaged set of users because you don't want your reputation going down uh, or dropping during the holiday season and then it's just a spam folder all throughout the holiday season. So it's it's uh, really important to understand that you need to build up your holiday season, prune the list, clear the list. Uh, that's the whole point where the ISPs also start um, uh, clearing up their old uh, uh, old mailboxes or dead addresses. So it's very important to start building through the holiday season. That's that's the homework that you need to, to keep doing. Uh, do we have any other question? Uh, yeah, there's more. And I think it actually really nicely segues to the next one. I'm perfectly aware of the time, so I'll take, make it very, very quick. Um, can we reach all of the subscribers to whom we want to send the re-engagement campaigns at once or any suggestions? So to keep it very, very short, I wouldn't recommend blasting them all in one go because what can happen is some of the emails will be abandoned and you will get into spam traps sometimes. The chances are. 
but also a bunch of people who you haven't heard from in a while might not even remember they subscribed to you. And then they will get an email and they'll say, oh, we don't want that, click spam. And if unsubscribed, especially as a link is not super obvious as happens sometimes. So I would recommend sending it in smaller batches, portioning it, because if they haven't engaged with you in half a year, they can wait another week or two if you portion out your reaching out engagement campaigns. Yeah, thank you, Anna. And I think uh, we're almost time over here. So uh, yeah, we'll pass it on back to Abby. And thank you all once again. Thank you, everyone. Um, that's everything for today. We've run a little short on time. Um, there's a couple of questions that we haven't got around to, but we will pick those up with you afterwards to make sure that you get the answers that you're looking for. Um, the recording will be available via the Spam House LinkedIn feed afterwards in case you want to look listen back to anything. Um, keep an eye out for details of episode two where Spam House's uh, Melinda Plemmel will be joined by Tom Bartell from v Validity, and they're going to be debunking the myths of spam trap clicks. So there'll be more details to follow, and we will see you then. So thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the day. Bye.